Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation's Annual Conference. I am Dr. Tanya Stevenson, the CEO at MDF, and I'm delighted you have joined us for our second virtual conference. We hope you're ready for two very exciting days of learning, connecting, moving, and a little entertainment. We have a spectacular conference planned with four different tracks, movement sessions, DM drug development updates, community panels, and even a short concert by the incredible Eric Hutchinson. Rach Khan is back this year with their spectacular strength training session. We have two wonderful new adaptive yoga instructors, and joining us for the first time this year is former Paralympic athlete, Nathan Perkins, who's offering his sit fit movement session. Special thanks to doctors Katie Eichinger and Tina Duong, the authors of the exercise guide for DM, for collaborating to share more about the importance of exercise. We have some new exhibitors this year, including a partnership with My Path Story Booth. Story Booth is a collaborative project at the University of Pennsylvania and Johns Hopkins. They're conducting personal interviews to gather information about experiences with disease, illness, and healthcare systems. They analyze information collected, share it with researchers and clinicians so that they can educate others about people's real life experience. Right now, Story Booth has absolutely no interviews about myotonic dystrophy, not a single one. So I encourage you to visit their booth, learn more about their work, and consider sharing your experiences so that others may benefit from you. Please don't forget during the conference to visit the MDF Research Fellow exhibit booths and learn more about their work on DM, as well as to talk with the DM scientists behind the 16 different research posters that they have created just for you to learn about their groundbreaking work. We are grateful to have the world's leading myotonic dystrophy experts here at the conference, including phenomenal speakers from around the world, including Northern Ireland, England, Wales, Spain, and just up the road from us in Canada. We also welcome conference attendees in the audience from over 20 different countries this year. The National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, and the United States Social Security Administration are all joining us and we're delighted to have invited over 12 different DM drug developers to be live in their booths to talk with you about their progress. For those of you who joined us at our first virtual conference last year, you may notice that we took your advice. We've extended the length of the conference sessions to accommodate additional questions, and at your request, we've built in more breaks. Of course, we have absolutely kept our traditional dance party. With all of the critical partners working together and collaborating on myotonic dystrophy, especially when I think about all of the progress we will hear about today and tomorrow, it is very clear that this community and the United DM ecosystem as a whole are changing the future of this disease faster than ever before. We may still be in the midst of a pandemic, but for the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation, the Myotonic Dystrophy community, all of our families, extended families, this is a promising, hopeful, and encouraging time. Last year, we shared MDF's progress over the last 14 years. So for the next few minutes, I'm privileged to work with several of my colleagues who will provide a snapshot of some of MDF's activities over this last fiscal year including the progress we've made with our strategic planning initiative. But before we get started, it looks like we have a special guest joining us today who would also like to welcome you. Ladies and gentlemen, U.S. Senator Tim Kaine. Hey everyone, Senator Tim Kaine here. It gives me great pleasure to appear, if by video, and offer greetings to the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation during your annual meeting. And I'm particularly pleased to be the lead co-sponsor in the Senate of a bill to make September 15th Myotonic Dystrophy Awareness Day. Um, my awareness of myotonic dystrophy traces back many, many years to my Richmond Fred Todd Stone, who explained to me about this rare genetic condition, one of the most common adult 
uh, dystrophies that affect many, many adults. As of now, there's no cure for this genetic disease, but powerful research is happening around the United States and around the world, including right in Richmond at Virginia Commonwealth University, research that is being dramatically advanced by work that you, the foundation, are doing. Um, I am very, very committed as a member not only of the Senate, but particularly of the Health, Education, and Labor Pension Committee to doing what I can to make sure that we're doing sufficient research and that agencies like the FDA are taking appropriate action to authorize treatments and cures when they're safe and available. So continue to count on me as a friend and ally, and I hope this uh, annual meeting is a very, very productive one as you continue your path on this most important cause. Thanks so much and, and best of luck to you. Thank you so much, Senator Kane. We are grateful for your advocacy, ensuring more people know about myotonic dystrophy, that more funds are dedicated to DM research, and for helping ensure that barriers are eliminated to advancing treatments and a cure. I will share more about International Myotonic Dystrophy Awareness Day in just a moment, and we certainly hope that you will join us on the 15th for a special presentation to celebrate the day. You can check out our International Myotonic Dystrophy Awareness Day page for more details and the link to the program when it is available. Okay, let's go to the slides. Let's take a look at what was new to MDF in 2021. Three new programs were introduced early in the year. Our Meet the DM Drug Developer series, which unveiled three new clinical trials for DM, welcomed eight biotech and pharma companies who introduced their programs and answered direct questions from the DM community in real time. In the Ask the Expert series, seven DM experts discussed heart, lungs, brain, GI, speech language, exercise, and anxiety. The DM community asked many questions of our experts live to finally receive answers to questions with their own healthcare providers which their own healthcare providers couldn't answer. The MDF community meetings started this summer were held in Florida, Illinois, Washington, DC, Texas, and Washington state. Dozens of people in each state gathered virtually to learn more about MDF's programs and research and to talk with each other about their shared experiences around DM. MDF has also launched a six month strategic planning process to help us explore and more strongly articulate the organization's vision, mission, values, and overarching goals to help guide our next three years. We'll be talking more about that in just a couple of minutes. MDF is also proud to have established the first ever International Myotonic Dystrophy Awareness Day, now designated September 15th, Working with over 40 organizations around the world, we united to create a global alliance to raise awareness about DM. Thanks to the advocacy efforts of community members Todd Stone and David Brand, we worked with U.S. Senator Tim Kaine, who you heard from earlier, who introduced a Senate resolution co-sponsored by Senator Klobuchar to declare the 15th International DM Awareness Day. Some of the people who helped make this happen will also be presenting in the advocacy session tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. I am also thrilled to share that in 2021, MDF onboarded two new staff members, Mike Knoppen, who is now MDF's program director, and Kate Beck, who joined as our special programs, sorry, special project manager. I'm going to share a little bit more about MDF's advocacy efforts this year now. MDF had five main advocacy objectives this year. First, we wanted to establish a global alliance of all parts of the extended DM ecosystem, public and private entities currently working to improve care and find treatments in a cure. In honor of Rare Disease Day in February, DM-focused nonprofits, hospitals, research institutions, and DM drug developers were invited to become founding members of the Global Alliance to share resources, expand outreach, and partner with one another more closely for the benefit of the entire global DM community. Even Athens Academy, a small private school here in Athens, Georgia in the US, 
has joined the Alliance to help their local community learn more about DM. The Alliance held an international logo competition, which also serves to raise awareness, and hundreds of people across over 20 countries voted on Alex LaBeouf's gorgeous logo. Now this logo is being used all over the world to represent International DM Awareness Day. This logo here in the bottom left of this slide, you will see in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all across Europe and the UK. We've even heard from a woman in Chile in South America using the logo to raise awareness in her local community. If we want the world to learn about DM, to increase funding, engage new research and researchers, advance treatments, and help families with DM live the best quality of life possible, it's going to take us all. And not to be dismissed, raising awareness at the local, regional, national, and international levels allows our families all over the globe to feel heard, seen, and inspired. And that matters. Page 24 on your printable conference agenda provides a snapshot of the current members of the Global Alliance, as you can see here. Well, because MDF's office is located in the US, we felt one way we could make the largest impact was to go to the highest level of government possible to ensure as many people as possible could learn about DM. We worked with DM community members to develop the Senate resolution officially declaring September 15th. International DM Awareness Day. I'm excited that Senator Kane and Senator Klobuchar introduced Resolution 336 on August 4th. The next step was to develop a grassroots campaign that would allow our community to help people understand more about DM. We created social media toolkits, outreach campaigns to ask US residents to engage their, their own state senators to co-sponsor the Senate resolution. We launched a window sign campaign, developed t-shirts, mugs, and so much more. Thousands of people have already engaged in raising awareness around the world, and September 15th is still a few days away. As you can see, the last two advocacy priorities for MDF included advocating to Congress to include DM in the list of diseases that receive grant funding from the US Department of Defense through the peer-reviewed medical research program. We've been successful with our advocacy for four years and are currently working on the fifth year. And finally, we're working with partners and authors of some of our DM clinical care guidelines to outreach to professional associations and societies, such as the American Society of Anesthesiologists and the Society for Pediatric Anesthesia, to share the clinical care guidelines with their members in honor of International DM Awareness Day. If even one life is saved because a clinician knew how to properly care for someone with DM, or we help healthcare providers learn to recognize the diverse symptoms of this disease, it may shorten time to diagnosis and our campaigns will be successful. I am very excited to now introduce you to Mike Knoppen, MDF's new program director. Since joining us in April, he has been running full steam ahead. Mike has been working with people living with rare diseases for many years, coming to us directly from the Pulmonary Hypertension Association. There he spent several years working with over 200 support groups and developing innovative programs. Mike is a brilliant communicator, brings with him tremendous ideas, and I believe MDF is incredibly fortunate to have him lead the next evolution of our programs. He has spent the last five months working closely with MDF support group facilitators, leading virtual community meetings around the country, reading books authored by people living with the disease to understand the variability and the real life impacts on daily activities of living. And of course, he has been planning this fantastic conference. Mike is originally from Wisconsin. He studied opera and he recently moved to Oakland to work with the MDF team. It is my great pleasure to introduce the newest member of the MDF team, Mike Knappen. Thank you, Tanya. As Tanya has said, I am Mike Knappen, the MDF Program Director. 
If you're wondering what that means, it's really quite simple. If you are someone living with myotonic dystrophy, or a family member of someone with myotonic dystrophy, or a care provider who cares for those living with myotonic dystrophy, then I work for you. It's a pleasure to be a part of this community, part of an incredible team working to change the future of myotonic dystrophy. Now I get to spend a few moments talking with you a little bit about our incredible programs this year and giving you a glimpse into the future. Let's take a look. 2021 has been a unique year, as we all know, but it has also been an extraordinary year of outreach for our programs. And why that matters is our programs are used by families, families just like yours, by providers who need to better understand how to care for their patients, by families who want to understand what's going on and what to expect. All of these programs are accessible to you on our website or by contacting us in any way. A number of these programs many of you may have used in the past. These are longtime popular programs like our warm line and our toolkits, our guidelines and clinical care recommendations. You can find these on the conference website by accessing the resources tab after this presentation. Our annual conference, of course, you know all about because you're here right now. It is a very popular program, but it's not our only one. You can find a number of other programs at our Digital Academy online, which shows archives of many recorded presentations by experts on so many subjects. We also have a Find an Expert map, which is a community sourced resource where you can find medical providers in your area in many different disciplines to help in the care of myotonic dystrophy. Currently on hold are some programs that are traditionally done in person. We hope to bring these back when it is safe to do so. A very popular program and a new one in 2021 was our Meet the DM Drug Developer Series. This gave our community an incredible opportunity to meet the companies that are working on drug development for myotonic dystrophy. You can see that we had a really full calendar. If you missed any of these presentations, do not worry, you can find a full archive online at myotonic.org slash meet dash dm dash drug dash developers. Many of these companies are here with us during this conference. You can contact them at their exhibitor booths and you can hear updates during the industry updates programs midday both days. Another wonderful program from 2021 was our Ask the DM Experts series. You can see that this covered a range of topics from a range of experts, topics that the community specifically asked for. You can find the archive for all of these presentations on our website, again, at myotonic.org slash ask dash expert dash series. Another new program were community meetings that we held virtually in different areas around the country. Like support groups, these gave community members opportunities to connect and share and meet others, and they involved some of our great volunteers, our support group facilitators. These were opportunities for MDF to go to areas that either do not have support groups or where support groups are not currently meeting and engage the community proactively, bringing folks together. These have been incredibly successful. I know that was fast, but we just have a few moments to share that sample of the 2021 programs that we've had. They've been tremendous successes thanks to your engagement. And we hope to continue these and many more programs. Thanks to our new strategic plan, we are not only going to grow these popular programs, but we hope to expand and create even new programs in 2022. Stay tuned. And it is, again, such a delight to meet you. I hope we can connect over the course of the conference. Now, it is my distinct privilege to welcome the chair of our board of directors, Mr. Jeremy Kelly. Jeremy. Thank you, Mike. It's great to have you on the team. Uh, I'm Jeremy Kelly, chairman of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation. And what I'd like now to do is walk you through what we've been doing on the cure side, as well as where we stand financially as an organization. So in 2021, uh, there are, the key update is we've got three new research grants outstanding. Uh, we have nine research fellowships that are in progress. 
Uh, and then we are engaging with 45 plus companies uh, who have DM programs. Uh, the drug development pipeline is a very useful tool that you can follow where we stand with all of those. Uh, and the good news is that there are three new clinical trials that have been launched this year. Uh, in addition, the Mitonic Dysphery Family Registry, uh, which is the largest DM only registry, uh, has over 2,100 members, and that obviously will be key when we get to trials and reaching out to the community. Uh, in addition, right now, uh, the foundation has uh, over $1.5 million of outstanding grants uh, that are supporting not only these initiatives, but uh, investments that we've made in the past. Uh, in terms of the, the, the new initiatives, um, the first one that I want to touch on is the natural history study. Uh, this uh, was awarded to Dr. Johnson at Virginia Commonwealth University. It's a $520,000 investment and it supports 17 sites around the world to follow DM patients to understand the disease progression uh, and basically uh, create a network that will be trial ready. Uh, as and when drugs come along. So that's, we're very excited about that. John, Dr. Johnson will be uh, presenting on, uh, making a presentation at the conference on this at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, so I strongly encourage you to listen to that. Um, our second initiative was $125,000 investment uh, to Dr. Johanna Hamill at the University of Rochester. Um, and this was actually made prior to COVID. Uh, and the idea is to determine the feasibility of remote genetic testing and disease assessments. Uh, obviously with COVID, this has become even more important. Um, please uh, visit uh, Dr. Johanna Hamill and her team at the University of Rochester. They have a, a, an exhibitor booth uh, where you can go ask questions. Uh, the third initiative is gene editing uh, with CRISPR. Uh, this is Dr. Vincent Dion, uh, Dion at the University of Cardiff. Uh, he'll be making a presentation at 10.30 uh, tomorrow uh, on the professional track, 10.30 uh, Pacific time. Um, and then lastly is the research fellowships that uh, the foundation has been investing in over the past decade. Uh, right now, we're delighted uh, that we have nine fellowships outstanding. Uh, we uh, have four from the previous year, and then we funded five new fellows this year. Um, seven of these fellows uh, have developed poster presentations to tell you uh, and update you about the work that they're doing. Uh, so please go to the poster sessions at 11.30 today and noon Pacific tomorrow. Uh, you can also talk to them uh, during the exhibitor uh, showcase hours. So switching gears to the, the financial side, uh, you know, where, where do we stand as an organization? And especially with, with COVID and all of the challenges, uh, I'm delighted to say that the foundation is in a very solid uh, financial position. Uh, we've worked hard over the past decade to ensure that we always have at least two years of operating expenses and cash reserves. Um, and what we saw this in 2020 was if you look at the expenses, that 1.2 million, uh, our run rate prior to COVID was about two and a half million. You know, we had uh, big expenses like the family conference. Obviously, we're not doing that in person, so that reduces the costs. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the good news here is that we have that the foundation has net assets of uh, $4.2 million. Uh, obviously, I've already mentioned the grant obligations that $1.5 million, um, but we have strong cash position. Um, in terms of revenue, uh, if you look at 2019, we brought in $2.5 million um, and we had expenses of around 2.5. So, you know, a, a break even year. 2020, actually, 
we reduced the expenses to uh, 1.2 million uh, and then on the revenue side exceeded our expectations with uh, $2 million of revenue. In terms of where the money uh, was dedicated to in 2020, uh, the pie chart on the right, uh, you can see that 82% of the funds were dedicated to research, care and advocacy. Uh, research got 31%, care got, uh, was the biggest investment at 37% and advocacy at 14%. Um, in terms of raising money, uh, the, the, in 2020, we just like we did the family conference on a virtual basis, we did the gala, uh, our biggest fundraiser on a virtual basis, and that exceeded all expectations. Uh, huge thanks to Martha Montag Brown, Leslie Lynch, and Erica Kelly, who were the, the gala co-chairs. Uh, we raised over $900,000, uh, which has been huge in terms of uh, giving us the foundation for our ongoing work. Um, the exciting news is we're doing a virtual gala again. Uh, that will take pay place on Friday, October 22nd at 5.30 Pacific. It's a, an hour long uh, event. Uh, and the theme this year is Journey to a Cure. So, you know, we're excited for as many people as possible to, to join in that. Um, another exciting development this past year was grassroots fundraising, which continues to grow each year. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, Facebook, you know, we raised over $140,000 this past year. Um, Facebook, uh, where a lot of our community, uh, you know, celebrating birthdays, raised money for the foundation. Uh, that brought in over $60,000. Uh, the Socks on, on campaign, Top Golf, Swim for MDF, uh, all were significant contributors, and we're very, very grateful for everybody's work. Uh, without everybody's financial support, uh, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do. So we're you know, delighted that the foundation is in a solid financial position. And you know, the exciting thing going forwards here is the work that. Uh, Dr. Tanya Stevenson, our CEO, is about to walk you through with the strategic plan. There'll be numerous investments that will need to be made and we're in a good position to do that. So thank you and I'll hand it over to Tanya. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeremy. All right, let's talk about our strategic plan. Since our founding in 2007, our mission has been care and a cure which is to enhance the quality of life of people living with DM and accelerate research focused on finding treatments and a cure. While we feel like these are definitely still priorities, we felt it was time to hear from the community about what was important to you, what you want from MDF, and just to be sure we weren't missing anything. Strategic planning is an essential part of any organization. For a foundation, it's an opportunity to listen to stakeholders, assess our strengths, and weaknesses and allow us to identify critical and relevant priorities. It helps provide direction for the organization by serving as a type of a roadmap or a framework with measurable goals and objectives that allow us to evaluate if we're actually meeting our mission. MDF was founded in 2007 by Shannon Lord and very dedicated and concerned families they were seeking resources and answers, and the first board of directors created MDF's mission statement, Care and a Cure, and focused on building responsive programs and the revenue needed to fund them. With the goal of eliminating barriers to drug development, the foundation then adopted a comprehensive and detailed drug development acceleration strategy in December of 2015, and has continued to execute virtually all of the projects outlined in that grant strategy. When I arrived in 2020, I saw an opportunity to assess our current community and organizational needs and develop a responsive plan to meet them. In the spring of 2021, we embarked on a strategic planning process to envision together the near-term future of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation over the next three years. We wanted to facilitate that process as 
inclusively as possible. So we engaged a team called Third Plateau. They are a social impact firm with specific expertise in working with nonprofit organizations and leaders across the social sector, including rare disease organizations. And they have been spectacular. The process was guided by a 10-person strategic planning committee comprised of individuals and families living with DM, representatives of the scientific and research community, clinicians, board members, the CEO, and other organizational and international partners and advocates. In addition to this group, MDF's board of directors, staff, and more than 800 members of the DM community participated in strategic planning. The project was designed to harness the collective thinking and experience of individuals and families across DM's, MDF's community. Engaging our community in our strategic planning work is absolutely foundational to our success. So across the next few minutes, you will hear from several members of our strategic planning steering committee. They're gonna share some of the core components of our strategic plan, including our vision, mission, core values, and three-year strategic goals. John Fitzpatrick, MDF board member and chair of the strategic planning committee, will share a little bit more about that process now. Hi, my name is John Fitzpatrick. I've been involved with the Mitonic Tree Foundation for about 12 years. Um, the last 10 as a board member. Um, my wife, Kristen, and our son, Jack, um, have Mitonic Tree, so that's kind of my, my connection to the work. Um, I was asked to lead the Strategic Planning Committee. Um, been in nonprofit management for about 30 years and done a bunch of strategic plans. So it was a real honor to be asked um, to serve as a volunteer in this role. I um, want to really acknowledge and thank Tanya and just can't say enough about her leadership um, and how lucky I feel to have her as our, our executive director and, and CEO and leader. So I'm going to walk you through in about five minutes um, a little bit more about the, the details of the strategic planning process that we went to. It was really important to Tanya, um, to me, to our board, that we have you know the most inclusive process, you know the widest list of stakeholders in sort of the 12 years I've been involved in the organization. And we took an opportunity to learn from all levels of the myotonic dystrophy foundation ecosystem families and people living with the disease uh, caregivers researchers drug developers healthcare professionals um, the whole spectrum but let me go to the slide and talk to you about the three different phases that we worked through um, phase one was learning phase two is ideation I hate that word it's like the first draft of what we're doing. The third fave, iterative design. Think about it like the final draft <laughs> of what you're presenting today. And I'll, I'll hit the highlights of what we did um, in each of these three phases. Next slide, please. So the, the first phase is the, the learning phase. And really what we tried to do um, was to under, understand kind of the current state of operations, kind of the environmental scan. Um, through both primary and secondary, you know, qualitative and quantitative research. Um, we did a SWOT to try to um, better understand our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, we also did peer comparisons. So we looked at a bunch of other rare disease, orphan genetic diseases around the country um, to try to learn from them. Um, but the most important thing um, is that last bullet, the last two really, the broad scale community survey and the broad scale um, community engagement. Next slide, please. Um, the most important thing for, I think, for me as the chair and for us as a board and for, I think I speak for all members of the planning committee, was to directly engage with as many possible members of the community as possible to understand the needs, your challenges, the perspective and experiences. And from my perspective, um, we rocked it and we did a good job. And we had more than 800 members of the community that participated either through a broad scale survey, one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus groups, or individual conversations with DM experts. So first, to those of you, you know, on the call today participated, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to give us such great feedback. Next slide. Um, again, this is just 
this is a list of all the different people that participated in the survey and the focus groups and the one-on-one -on -one interviews. Next slide. So phase two, the ideation, figuring stuff out. Um, this is where we dug in with all the data, all the surveys, all the information we got from phase one and started putting you know, pen to paper, words to slides. Um, and we had a sort of two half day planning sessions um, to make meaning of the research and the learning phase and to start working on the draft of MDF's vision, mission, and strategic goals for the next three years. The, the headline, I think, from um, moving from phase one to phase two, you know, is moving from draft to something that's more final. So the iterative design phase, you know, the fancy consultant language for writing it up and finalizing the plan. We went through a lot of different drafts with the strategic planning steering committee, got a lot of feedback from staff, board, stakeholders in our community, and we got to a final draft of our vision, mission, values, and strategic goals, which was approved by the board in August, and which we're really proud to present with you today. And from my perspective, and I think I speak for the whole um, board, one of the most profound and greatest outcomes of this strategic planning process has been the opportunity through these surveys, through this engagement, to deepen our clarity and understanding about who we are as an organization and what our purpose is, you know, which is really illustrated um, in the form of our vision and our mission. Next slide. This is the um, overall plan, you know, what we're presenting today, you know, sort of the first four things, the vision, mission, values, and goals. We're gonna work through the strategies, metrics, timeline, and budget um, later on and, and have an opportunity for discussion and presentation about that. But drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. Happy to present our new vision. Next slide. The vision of the Myotonic History Foundation. We envision a world with treatments and a cure for myotonic dystrophy. Let me say that again. We envision a world with treatments and a cure for myotonic dystrophy. With that, I am happy to hand over uh, the baton, the mic, the camera to my friend, partner, and member of the Strategic Planning Steering Committee, Ms. Lorraine Dressler, to tell us more about MDF's mission. Thank you. My name is Lorraine Dressler. I'm 68 years old, a retired registered nurse, and I live with myotonic dystrophy. I was diagnosed along with my daughter and our firstborn grandchild two weeks before he was born. I um, attended my first myotonic dystrophy conference one month after my diagnosis. And I came away with such a, a feeling of focus and purpose and met people that embraced me. Uh, that, act, that continues to support me every, every conference that I have attended. Uh, and seven years ago, I volunteered to be a support group facilitator. And now we do it virtually and we do it every month. Oh, you know, I joined the MDF Strategic Planning Committee because I live with myotonic dystrophy and I have two other generations that live with me as well, with their own unique challenges. And I felt that my experience would be of value to this project. You know, our mission is grounded in the unique role that Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation plays in moving the world toward our vision, which, as John said, is a world where there are treatments and a cure for myotonic dystrophy. Through all of the research done during this project, one theme kept rising to the top, community first. As Tanya mentioned earlier, since 2007, the mission of MDF has been care and cure to enhance the quality of life of people living with DM and push forward the research focusing on treatments and a cure for DM. 
What we found missing from our mission is community. The community data showed that the community, community must always be part of our North Star. When we lose sight of the importance of community, we lose our focus. Therefore, the Strategic Planning Committee worked together to develop a slightly enhanced mission that ensures community, care, and a cure are all central to MDF's work. I'm going to share my screen now to unveil the enhanced mission of MDF. The mission of the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation is community, care, and a cure. We support and connect the myotonic dystrophy community. We provide resources and advocate for care. We accelerate research towards treatments and a cure. The mission statement resonates for me because that I, that's all that I work towards and for as part as the DM community. To complement our vision and mission, the planning process develops six core values. Now it is my privilege to introduce Tom McPeak, who will speak more about that. Tom? Thanks, Lorraine. As she mentioned, my name is Tom McPeak. I was diagnosed with myotonic dystrophy type 2 in 2008 and attended my first MDF conference in Clearwater, Florida 10 years ago. I currently sit on the Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation's Board of Directors, and I am the facilitator for the Virtual Myotonic Dystrophy Type 2 Support Group. As part of the strategic planning process, we reflected on the values that drive our work. Our core values guide our approach to pursuing our vision and mission and are the foundation to who we are. These values reflect the characteristics and behaviors to which we aspire both as an organization and as a broader community. Values help define an organization's culture. There are six values in all, and at this time I would like to share my screen. The first two values, community and empathy. Community, our community is our greatest asset. We believe that people living with myotonic dystrophy are the experts of their own disease and experience. We prioritize cultivating our community as an engaged, extended family of individuals living with DM, healthcare professionals, researchers, and other organizational partners and advocates. Empathy. We approach our work and our relationships with empathy, consistently seeking to understand others' points of view and unique lived experiences, both to build trust across our community and to inform our work. These values are important to me because each and every person here is a valuable and important member of the community, from those of us living with the disease, to the employees at the MDF, to our researchers, doctors, partners, and advocates. It is so important to listen and learn from people's experiences and perspectives, especially when they are different from our own. The Myotonic Dystrophy Foundation has lived this value through their work for many years and we affirmed our commitment to continue doing so for all members of the DM community. I would like to pass the mic to Dr. Eric Wang now to talk about hope and collaboration. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. As mentioned, I'm Dr. Eric Wang. I have family members living with DM, and I've dedicated my life and career to better understanding and finding treatments for this disease. I was actually funded as an MDF fellow in 2012 and 2013, and I've been involved with MDF for many years in many different ways. I've been excited to see it grow and mature into the organization it is today. I joined the Strategic Planning Steering Committee because I felt that this was an important time to help provide feedback about the needs of our community, including patients, families, and researchers. I'm gonna pull up a slide so everyone can see the next two core values very clearly. These two core values guide MDF's work and their hope and collaboration. Hope. We tackle challenges and uncertainty with hopefulness and optimism. We work towards significant outcomes that improve lives 
with the steadfast belief that there will be effective treatments and a cure. Collaboration. We value collaboration. We recognize that it is through shared commitment and effective teamwork with many partners across our network that we will make meaningful progress. These values really resonate with me because I live my life every day with the hope that the work we do in the lab and the community will really help make the lives of people living with DM better. I continue to imagine the day getting nearer in which DM will no longer present itself as a significant negative impact to those who live with it. I hold hope because I, although the challenges are great, I think we more and more have the tools we need to make great progress. I also value collaboration because this is really critical to solving difficult problems. DM is such a complex, multi-systemic disease, and it will take scientists, researchers, and drug developers with all different types of expertise to work together to understand and treat these symptoms. In addition, making medicines is really difficult. It involves an entire ecosystem of individuals and teams to move a treatment forward. There are two more values essential to guiding our work, and I'll let Dr. Belen Esparis share those with you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. My name is Dr. Belen Sparks, and um, my connection to MDF started about nine years ago when um, my daughter Emily was diagnosed with congenital myotonic dystrophy. This thing happened until she was seven years old, even though she had significant respiratory and um, muscle weakness uh, problems at birth. Um, but she's now 16 and um, hanging in there. Um, I'm also connected to the myotonic dystrophy community at the sleep clinic since I'm a sleep disorder specialist. Um, so I guess that's a double connection there. When Emily was diagnosed, we were um, not expecting this diagnosis. There was no family history. I was just finishing my sleep fellowship like two weeks before she was delivered. And I didn't know anything about the congenital form of the disease, had very little knowledge about the adult form. So um, my husband and I were really looking for information and it was hard to find. Uh, uh, we until we found MDF and we went to that first meeting. And I remember that meeting having such an impact in our lives and be, being very enlightening in different uh, ways. We, it was the place where we found the most um, accurate and up-to-date information. We were able to meet with um, specialists in this area, but it also made us realize that there was a long road ahead and that we needed to you know, contribute in any way we could to help move research and, and get more um, knowledge about the, the, the disease, how it progresses, the symptoms, how to measure, connect the research uh, community with the patients and, and so on. Um, so we've tried to be as involved as, as we can. Um, that's why I didn't hesitate when I was um, invited to participate in the strategic planning, planning committee. Um, I'm happy to, to, to do that and very grateful for the opportunity. It was an experience, um, a great experience. Um, I learned a lot and hopefully you'll, you'll all be, um, you know, happy with the results. So now I guess it's time to pull up the slides. I'm going to um, show you our final two core values knowledge and urgency. Knowledge, we are committed to ongoing learning, knowledge sharing, and continuous improvement. We recognize our role in building and sharing knowledge that will improve the quality of life for our community and accelerate progress toward treatments and a cure. Urgency. We operate with persistent focus and determination to address the pressing needs of our network. 
We effectively prioritize our work and actions to ensure we have the most significant impact toward our vision. These two core values, knowledge and urgency, are important to me because there are, these are two areas where we can increase awareness in the community to help people manage their daily challenges of the condition in school, at work, and at home. There's a need to educate doctors of all specialties that get to see patients with myotonic dystrophy from the primary care providers to the you know, most specialized um, physician that can be involved in the care of anyone with myotonic dystrophy. It's also important to give patients access to uh, reliable and essential information that they can take to their doctors and help communicate um, and navigate the uh, complicated medical system. And last but not least, we need to keep taking our message to Congress and show them how important it is to um, increase funding and uh, for these conditions so we can find solutions and treatments. Knowledge is power and we need lots of it to be able to provide good care and treatments for people with myotonic dystrophy. This is something that cannot wait. We have limited time available since this is a progressive condition that, you know, today for many of the patients, it may be fully reversible with treatment, but no one can guarantee that that will be the case tomorrow. This is also urgent because this disease is, um, has a multi-generational nature and you know usually there's not only one person affected in the family but the caregivers today may develop symptoms later in life and that may preclude them from being able to um, care for the other family members so this provides a sense of urgency that is pretty unique that you don't see in many other medical conditions so those are our final two core values. Now it's a pleasure to turn these back to Tanya. Thanks, Belen. And thanks to all of you on the Strategic Planning Steering Committee. I'll wrap up our strategic planning overview by sharing that our planning process yielded four clear priorities for MDF over the next three years. The first is to strengthen our community. As our greatest asset, it is our most significant priority. And over the next three years, we will prioritize growing and strengthening this community. We aim to build and enhance connection, continue to lessen the burdensome impacts of the disease and improve quality of life, and cultivate hope for life-changing treatments and a cure. We will continue to invest in developing high quality resources and programs that support our community members with an additional focus on individuals affected by DM2. The second is care, to improve and expand access to healthcare and resources to better meet the needs of individuals and their families. Our aim here is to ensure that individuals who are experiencing symptoms of DM are properly diagnosed and have ongoing care, access to care and high quality resources that meet their needs and will help to improve their well being. We'll ensure that individuals and families are empowered and have the tools and resources needed to self-advocate while at the same time continuing to educate healthcare community, including clinicians, insurance companies, and other healthcare providers. The third goal for the next three years is cure. We want to eliminate barriers to accelerate drug development. MDF can identify and eliminate barriers to developing treatments for myotonic dystrophy through acting as a trusted and credible liaison between industry, researchers, and our community, and advancing a policy and funding environment conducive to research. MDF plays a critical and facilitative role in connecting and promoting collaboration across industry, research, regulating agencies, and the community of individuals and families affected by the disease, as well as the network of healthcare professionals. Finally, the fourth strategic goal is around organizational strength. 
We want to build a strong and sustainable organization. A strong, enduring team and organization is foundational to making meaningful progress toward our vision. We have a tremendous team at MDF, and over the next two, the next three years, we're going to continue to invest in our people and our institution. Specifically, we will focus on building sustainable and adaptable organization that is equipped with the leadership, financial resources, and staffing necessary to meet the needs of our network in an enduring way. Over the next few weeks, our board of directors will be reviewing additional details of the plan. These include strategies and tactics that we will employ to make progress towards each of our goals. It includes the metrics that we will collect to analyze and understand the progress we are making, a clear timeline for how we will implement the plan, and a budget that models the financial investments we plan to make. So who is going to implement this new strategic plan, you might ask? Team MDF, of course. Throughout the program this year, you're going to see and hear from many of our team members at MDF. If you have a chance to say hello during the networking sessions, I highly recommend it. We would be so delighted. First off is our dedicated and generous volunteer support group facilitators who lead over 20 support groups across the US and in Canada. Our scientific advisory committee, many of the world's leading experts in DM, they provide guidance, insight, and they work with us to help navigate the latest in DM science for the development of new DM grants and programs. Our brilliant board of directors, who through strong governance, helps ensure MDF is fiscally sound and we are meeting our goals and objectives. And finally, my unbelievable team who have been working nonstop to bring this conference to you and who work every day to make sure that we are one step closer to our mission. And finally, before we close, I want to thank all of our industry partners for helping make this conference possible. Avidity, Dyne, Harmony, Nubase, Ask Bio, Expansion, AMO, Biogen, Vertex, Locana Bio, Ceros, Pepgen, Lupin Neurosciences, Pfizer, and Adentis. That concludes our opening session. Thank you all for joining us. This morning and we hope you enjoy the conference. I look forward to seeing many of you at the networking sessions later on. Take care.